if you're Procter and Gamble or Sherwin Williams or one of those companies, you do not want to have a uh, a, a callback, um, a, uh, a situation where uh, there are folks out there misusing your product or having uh, or, or or becoming harmed with your product. And we want to minimize risk. So it's an entirely different uh, mindset, uh, although everything is similar. And I have a little yin and yang sign, uh, sign there because there is harmony and similarity between the two approaches. Uh, so how do good ideas originate? Well, of course, sitting at a stoplight or taking a shower. And we all have that bit of inspiration where, aha, I think I can really develop this and I can sell it and make some money. Uh, entrepreneurs who are currently in, involved with their business uh, have the unique advantage of, of being surrounded totally by their customers, by their supply chain, and ideas come to them fairly quickly and easily. And the big guys do something called white space analysis. And we'll touch on uh, the last two bullet points and describe more in depth and detail on how these uh, develop the ideas and become products. The entrepreneur, as I said, um, is immersed in their business. They often think of the idea first. And the business case, which we preach so much about, the business canvas, can happen simultaneous to development of the new product. And that's one of the advantages the entrepreneur has, the ability to move fast, the ability to create and test ideas out through immediate customer discovery uh, prior to launch. The big guys some do something called white space analysis. And uh, for those of you who have been involved with the corporate world or been involved with large companies um, or, or, or know of folks who work there, they do something uh, where they analyze the current state of the market and find the opportunity and basically hit them where they ain't. <laughs> Excuse me. The white space simply is analyzing the competition and how they price, uh, understanding societal and business trends, understanding the current technology and customer input, et cetera. Fairly straightforward. Uh, the disadvantage here is if you're an uh, entrepreneur is you can't do all of that. You know, they they have teams, they have marketing teams, they have sales teams. Um, th those folks have an army of people unleashed trying to determine um, business trends, trying to talk to customers. Uh, but we as entrepreneurs really can't do that. So um, this is the, uh, again, this is the last slide I'll show you regarding the corporate side, but this is how they do it, basically. You know, stage and gates. You uh, do a stage one where you're scoping out and trying to find that white space. Uh, then you come to a gate, which is basically a meeting. Uh, where you present to your boss and you move on to stage two if your boss agrees with all of your work in stage one. Uh, and again, as entrepreneurs, we really can't do that. Uh, we have to move quickly. We have to find the idea and commercialize. So let's talk about the entrepreneur side specifically now and um, how we can lower our risks, as I said, simultaneous to moving quickly. So first of all, let's go through a six-point checklist. So if you had to write something down at this point, everyone, this is probably a good time to do it. Uh, this is the six-point checklist that uh, will kind of help you validate your idea and see uh, um, if it is a good idea. Number one, does your idea solve a problem? And again, it doesn't matter if you're working at Procter & Gamble or Sherwin-Williams. Um, you have to find a pain point within your customer base <clears throat> that identifies a problem and then you can find that problem and solve it. Because who wants to buy something that you don't need? That need is the problem that you can solve. You have to find it. And we'll talk about how to do that. 
So secondly, has anyone else thought of this? You would be surprised how many people I talk to as a SCORE mentor who think of the idea, but tell me they've done their homework, but they haven't really done their homework. And you have to go into Google, YouTube, even check Amazon, um, talk to people. There are ways to determine if uh, how unique and innovative you are. And again, we'll talk about that. So concept building, um, the idea of talking to others without giving away your idea and secret um, is something that I'll show you. Uh, can you effectively describe it? <clears throat> and this is probably uh, the number one weakness of all entrepreneurs out there. They have an idea, but to talk about it to someone else and describe it becomes a, a challenge. I just had this issue yesterday with my current client. He calls me up and he says he has this great idea for a new uh, product concept within his business. He, it, took, it took him 15 minutes before I understood what he was saying. Um, again, you have to uh, think about what you're saying and effectively describe it such that you can reduce what you're doing or thinking about to an 11 second elevator speech. And we'll talk about that. Do you have a platform or product? Um, the consultants like to ask you, what is the size of your prize? Um, if you wanna commercialize an idea, uh, let's talk about the product and hopefully that product can come from a platform and we'll show you uh, how that arises. And lastly, how do you determine if it's really uh, patentable? What is my level of innovation? Uh, am I more unique than useful? Or am I useful, but not necessarily unique? You know, if you're both, uh, you basically have the Apple iPhone, right? Uh, you have uh, one of the, um, it, it, you have a product that is is in demand as soon as you see it. And uh, we'll, We'll talk about that. So <clears throat> number one, um, here are some never fail concepts. So if you can find a problem to solve, and as we talked about solving a problem, if you can find a problem to solve in any one of these areas, chances are you're gonna be very, very successful. Can you save time? How many products out there that have reached the marketplace um, that saves, that specifically tells you, I can save your time, whether it be a, you know, a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, or whether it be a, a vacuum cleaner that, uh, that, that, that also scrubs carpets, uh, or a robo a vacuum. Uh, I mean, the idea, the, the, the concepts go on and the examples go on and on. Uh, increases personal or family safety. Um, another big area people are con continually concerned about their safety or their families. DIY, do it yourself. Make my job easier. You know, you can walk down the aisles of Home Depot or Lowe's and every spring, summer, fall and winter, every season, there are new products being introduced that allows you to do your job easier in some way. Um, provides critical information. Now, 10 years ago, I would not include this bullet point in this particular slide, but right now with so many apps being developed, uh, providing information. Um, now, probably one of the most original apps was the Garmin um, um, uh, geolocation device where the maps appear right in front of you. We don't buy Garmin's anymore, but we have it on our phone. And uh, that critical information of where you are at any particular time, uh, geolocating one of the most critical uh, pieces of um, software ever developed. Personal comfort and health. <clears throat> it's a little different than number two, personal and family safety. We're talking about comfort and health here. Um, you know, just look at any advertisement for uh, pillows and blankets and, and shoes. And <laughs> the examples, again, go on and on. Uh, superior performance over what is currently available. Again, 
uh, a very uh, strong play. If you can design a better uh, widget, a better mousetrap over what is currently available, people will pay for that. Uh, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, the best example here are power tools. Uh, you know, DeWalt um, and Milwaukee Tools, Black & Decker, they're currently uh, always, always, always trying to uh, improve over the current design in order to one-up their competition. Um, better design, sexier look. You know, this is all about the uh, automotive OEMs, uh, fashion, um, sexier looks, newer features, uh, always uh, uh, a, a success in some way. Um, again, maybe not as strong a play as saves you time and increases safety, et cetera, but uh, certainly meritable as a new product. Let's go through some examples. You know, we've all seen this product. This was introduced uh, about three or four years ago, maybe maybe even longer, maybe five years. It covers five of the never fail concepts. You know, uh, saves time, in, um, uh, it makes your job easier. Um, it's personal comfort, health, uh, certainly superior performance over what is available currently, and a great design. Um, you know, you just slip your feet right in there and um, put your shoes on without bending over. Um, okay, let's move on to number two. You know, are you the first to think of this? It's, it's very simple. You know, you can use YouTube and Amazon, um, USPTO.gov will tell you if it's patentable or if your trademark is available. Um, I suggest you, uh, you know, you use that as a good source. Uh, you can buy the competitors' products. You know, we talk about better design, sexier look, uh, newer features and benefits. Well, buy the competitors first. Do us do an exercise where you're analyzing them. Uh, look at each feature and benefit to make sure that you can improve uh, any one of those. And lastly, uh, one of the best uh, methods I have to finding out what is currently out there is trade shows. You know, you walk the show the first time. The, in the, you know, if you want to go to the food and beverage show, but you've never developed anything in food and beverage, uh, just walk the show the first time. Some of these are in Chicago or Las Vegas. You know, that's the disadvantage. Maybe you can take a vacation as you go out there. But um, the first time, walk the show. Second time, if you're successful and you feel that you can really commercialize this, set a booth up. Um, and we'll talk about trade shows in part two of this um, series and how we can um, maximize uh, our time there. So here we get into the meat of actual development and uh, building your concept. The... I, I can't stress enough that, again, communication of your concept to a potential customer or to anyone is so important. Uh, you will get positive and negative responses. When you get a negative response, you can weigh that, process it, and build on it and uh, incorporate some of the uh, uh, responses and build the idea out. Um, you can get practice selling your idea. Ultimately, if you're going to be an entrepreneur and you're going to start your own business, you have to be the chief salesman. I'm sorry, but uh, for those introverts out there, it is probably one of the most difficult things to get over. You have to be the evangelist. You have to sell the idea and you have to practice it. Um, it also helps you to develop your 11 second elevator speech. Um, the 11 second elevator speech is a precursor to your eventual value proposition. Um, and we'll talk about how that works in a, in a few slides uh, and certainly in part two. Um, the hint here, of course, is you don't have to mention the idea and, you know, and give the store away, essentially. You, how this works is we'll talk about customer discovery, how effective customer discovery is done in, in the real world and, um, and, and how you can obtain the information necessary to create the best product possible without 
giving the store away. So we want to keep talking and keep brainstorming. And I'm going to pound this away as much as I can. Uh, the ability to use your listening skills and blend the input of others to build your concept. Uh, you want to improve your idea. And you want to challenge yourself that what you feel is that, that a problem is also a problem in others' minds. I can't um, you know, stress that enough. I've had a number of clients where they, they've, uh, they've contacted me after they've commercialized their idea. And I ask them, um, you know, did you talk to others believing that they had this same problem? And I hear a number of times that they didn't do a very complete customer discovery exercise. Uh, they thought it was a problem, but it turns out that others did not think it was a problem. So keep talking, keep brainstorming, and keep building your concept. <laughs> okay. So when you think you have a solid concept, all right, you've talked to friends and family, and you think that maybe this is going to work. Now let's talk about customer discovery, which is, uh, you know, you're, you know, you're moving into some areas that's going to give you, uh, you know, the best information possible and confirm even further that you can be a success. Um, what does customer discovery do? It simply identifies your customers. You're going to find out who your target demographic is. And that is an important understanding. If you understand who your target demographic is, you can start building your marketing plan. You know, you're right at this point, you're writing things down because you want to build your website out and build your marketing plan and your sales strategy. Well, the customer discovery is the first step in identifying who your customer is. What you want to find out, of course, is will someone really pay for this? And ultimately, how will they use the product? Well, there is a truth to customer discovery that I'd like to, um, you know, I, I have to be very honest because your belief in what will succeed will almost always change. It's 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 a fact of life. It doesn't matter, again, if you're Procter & Gamble or Sherwin-Williams. If you think of the idea and you go out and talk to other people about it, you know, they're going to input to you their thoughts. And you may think that, well, I think it... Maybe if I do this, maybe if I just change and tweak a little bit of, of a feature, a benefit, uh, 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 a, a performance uh, in the product, uh, it will be even more successful. You know, this is called pivoting, and pivoting is good. You know, uh, in, in software development, um, you most always uh, will tweak a little bit um, what you think will work versus what the customer actually needs. <clears throat> so the customer discovery process, find 20 potential customers. You know, and I say minimum, um, but about 20. What you think is your target demographic. You prepare five to 10 questions. And these five to 10 questions are generally um, open-ended um, about product usage, service usage. How do you think about this? What do you think about that? And um, we'll show you some examples of some questions that are traditionally asked, uh, again, without giving the store away. So you wanna build and uh, gather information concerning your concept. Now, when do you stop? When, when you get the same answer over and over again, that's a good uh, uh, estimate as to uh, when to stop and when to move on to the next stage. Uh, because ultimately, as an entrepreneur who's also a marketer, and you know, I talk about you're also the salesman, well, you're also the marketer because you're going to develop your features and benefits and value proposition. 
Those three things right there really define your product and gives you the minimum viable product that you'll take to market. MVP. Um, it is uh, the product that you can introduce, start making money on. And if you have to tweak it down the line, uh, all good. Um, it's, uh, that's why we say it's the minimum viable product. It's the product that will make you money initially. So customer discovery is all about being comfortable and talking to strangers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's a great example up there in the picture. These two young ladies would like to start a health food restaurant. Well, um, geez, I'm going to start a health food restaurant in this neighborhood. Not quite sure if this neighborhood would accept anything like that. But I'm going to go talk to other restaurants in the area and uh, see how they view this concept. And uh, maybe talk to them about suppliers. Maybe talk to them about uh, advertising, maybe talk to them about, um, you know, uh, location. Uh, so you want to um, sit with folks and uh, begin a current state discussion. Uh, how are things currently now with folks coming into your restaurant and ordering this type of cuisine? Um, you want to focus on problems, um, you know, do your own, uh, you know, SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, and uh, talk and talk and talk. Continually communicate with uh, others about the concept, about the idea, and uh, uh, mold it and sculpt it into a very uh, uh, solid um, problem-solving um, solution. Um, just a quick note here about customer discovery versus focus group. <clears throat> Excuse me. Customer discovery is about one-on-one -on -one interaction. Focus group is, as it says, it's a group. You're going to get multiple inputs. Uh, it's great for business to consumer type of products because everybody has their own perception. Everybody has their own idea as to what makes them uh, satisfied with a product. And you want to acquire as much as information as possible about your idea because it's going to serve so many different personalities, so many different uh, demographic groups, old, young, rich, poor, um, uh, multi-ethnic. So um, uh, customer discovery, again, uh, more one-on-one -on -one, uh, and um, uh, more thought-provoking, probably. Um, customer discovery will eventually create your value proposition. <laughs> The value proposition is a term used throughout marketing and new product development, uh, just about in any discussion. It's the reason why you make money. It's the reason why the product exists. It's the reason why you your effort is so is, is, is so focused on making this thing that you call your idea, product or service successful. Uh, it is the shortest sentence or statement possible you can make and have the greatest impact. Now, what's an example of that? Here are some companies, you know, Soul Insole. These folks, they want to compete with Dr. Scholl's. You know, Dr. Scholl's is a gorilla on the, on the market shelf. You know, you walk into any CVS or drugstore or, or Giant Eagle or grocery store, and you go back to, um, uh, you know, the health and wellness area. They dominate the shelf. Soul Insole, wants to compete with them, and they're doing a pretty good job in, in, in certain areas. They don't say anything about comfort. They talk about foot pain, the fast, natural way to get relief from foot pain. If you go to their website, you can talk, you, you can see that they define the pain. It's all about um, relief from pain. Nicoblock, the easy way to quit nicotine that's 10 times more effective than trying to quit cold turkey. You know, in their value proposition, they will actually give you a number, they'll quantify. You know, we are 10 times more effective. You know, quite a powerful um, um, value proposition. And my favorite, uh, which I consider probably the best value proposition of any company anywhere. And there are six words that Shopify uses. It is as powerful and as dynamic as you can possibly imagine. They're, they're telling you anyone anywhere can start a business. 
boy, if I saw that and I had an idea, I would be contacting Shopify or I'd be using Shopify um, the more specifically on my website. So <clears throat> let's talk about writing down. We've already talked about talking uh, verbally. We're going to talk about documenting your idea. And why is this important? And again, I can't stress this enough. Organize your thoughts and focus. It forces you to recognize any shortcomings or weak points. The written word is more powerful than the spoken word in understanding your own brain. When you see it on paper, you can see right up front where your weaknesses is, where your strengths are. Um, and it's a great way to simply start the patent process because ultimately you're going to have to be communicating with a lawyer and that lawyer is going to have to be reading something that um, that describes what you're trying to do. Now, as I said earlier, you're going to be the chief salesman. You're going to be the chief evangelist. So you can start practicing your sales pitch. The best way to do that again, write it down. Um, let's move on now. Uh, I describe what a platform is versus a product. The reason why I bring this up is if you want investor money, for those of you out there who are thinking about uh, getting investor money, friends or family or venture money, in investors prefer platforms rather than a single product because a platform gives you the ability to create many products. Um, why is that important? Because if your initial product fails, you can tweak it and maybe come out with something similar or something additional. Uh, it allows you to line extend, create many products under your brand uh, or within the platform. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I say brand, but it could also be a theme. It could be, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, a restaurant theme. You know, initially Subway came out with creating your own sandwich. You, you know, uh, you can pick and choose from a number of ingredients right in front of you. Uh, so this theme, this platform has been uh, exploited and used in many other uh, types of fast food restaurants. But a platform, again, allows you the ability to create many products from a concept. Up there on the right-hand side, the platform here would be adhesives. You know, there's a chemical formula up there. And that adhesive allows you then to develop anything from a tape to a glue, to a caulk, to a poster, to uh, uh, a sticky um, uh, post-it, anything like that. The platform is the adhesive. Other examples, um, I know the platform is lithium batteries. We can put that in cars, appliances, electronics, um, freeze drying foods. Uh, we all know the story of Charles Birdseye, uh, the, the, the first one to develop uh, frozen vegetables. Uh, well, now we see freeze drying everywhere and frozen foods everywhere in the Giant Eagle um, uh, freezer section. Uh, B to B, uh, that was a B to C examples. B to B, <laughs> you know, I talked about personalized food. Here we also have a geolocation operating software. You know, that can be wrapped into Uber, Lyft, DoorDash. My goodness, uh, so many applications there. Uh, you know, for those, uh, uh, you know, making soaps in your basement or kitchen, uh, you know, you're going to be using surfactants as the platform. Uh, you know, we can take surfactants and put them into any industry. So do I need a patent? Let's talk about patents. Um, yeah, you can be useful and unique, um, where you don't want to be is kind of useful and kind of unique. Um, if investors see that, uh, kind of nebulous, well, I kind of get it. Um, and there are kind of things out there already similar. As soon as you enter into that zone, you know, you're talking about, well, I, don't really think this will succeed. The best possible place to be, of course, is that upper right-hand quadrant of uh, potential investors. 
or I am unique and I am useful. So again, um, how do I become unique and useful? You become useful by solving a problem and you become unique by doing your homework and finding out the best feature and benefit that has the highest utility value amongst your target demographic. So let's talk about getting a patent. Now, all of you out there may not have the, uh, the idea worthy of a patent, but some of you may do, or may indeed have a idea that is patentable. It's, you know, don't become um, dissuaded by the expense in uh, uh, obtaining a patent. Um, you can still do this, uh, but we can do a provisional patent. But step one is the patent invention disclosure. And we talked about the importance of writing and documenting. And this is where uh, we will take advantage of our ability to create two simple paragraphs. Uh, number one is the background. You describe the, the category and explain what the problem is. And number two, the summary, the second paragraph, which is your solution. You sign and date it. And it's just a simple word document that when you find a good patent lawyer, the first thing you can do is send them the invention disclosure. What that will do is you say will save you a couple hundred dollars initially um, by uh, you know organizing your thoughts and tell the patent lawyer that uh, that this is the category I'm operating in and this is my innovation. Excuse me. So he doesn't have or she doesn't have to sit at the computer and go through the category and what the potential uh, com uh, competition may be. You've already done the work for them. And uh, that would be step one. Step two is consider a provisional patent as, as I just mentioned. Uh, the, pro the, the provisional patent will cost you about $1,000 to $1,500. Uh, it locks a priority date. Um, it'll last one year. 12 months, it'll it'll give you the ability to say it's patent pending. So when you talk to your supplier or talk to a potential customer or talk to anybody um, in, um, you know, in building your marketing plan, uh, you can talk to um, them about being legally patent pending. Um, online services, I get a lot of questions about, um, you know, legal Zoom. Uh, sure, you can use LegalZoom, but you have to be careful here. Uh, any online service, whether it be uh, InventHelp uh, or any of those that you see on TV advertising those services, um, it's okay, but uh, I would be very, very careful because ultimately what they want is your money, not necessarily your success. Um your lawyer will talk to you about a design patent versus a utility patent. It is best to get a utility patent. Um, that is the more defensible patent. If you're ever approached by a competitor, excuse me, a design patent is exactly what it says. It's a design. Your competition can easily design around the design by improving on the design by creating a new design to accomplish the same task. So utility patents are much more defensible and um, um, much more um, desirable, I guess is the word. So some when you move into talking to your lawyer, um, there's some do's and don'ts. Uh, really not I don't want to stress or speak heavily into this slide because it's not really germane to our discussion here and is really worth a separate um, um, presentation. Uh, now, we will be having a separate webinar on this topic in the upcoming weeks uh, given by an actual lawyer. So, um, but I can share with you some do's and don'ts real quick. Um, the provisional patent, of course, is something you want to start with because it is a provisional. It's 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 providing that your 
uh, customer discovery process succeeds. Uh, that's why it's a provisional. Um, secondly, think about your commercialization strategy. Uh, you might want to license your invention rather than take it to market yourself. Um, secondly, or thirdly, um, you want to patent the broadest utility possible um, because uh, you want to you want you, you want to capture as much of the um, a concept as possible, preventing others from practicing it. Uh, use an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, for any discussion with vendors at any time uh, during the development of the idea. And lastly, ask yourself, what are you protecting? Some of you may not need a patent. Some of you may just simply use a trade secret uh, or consider it a trade secret. Um, there are some advantages and disadvantages there, but um, ask yourself exactly what you are protecting. Because if you're gonna spend 15 to $20,000 on a um, 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 patent, um, you might wanna uh, ask yourself, uh, just what are you protecting? Now I see some questions coming in um, and I haven't been paying attention to them, but I will uh, at the completion of the presentation. So hang on everyone. Um, design patents, um, a, a, a good idea here is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, a good example is a formula patent rather than uh, as a design patent. You know, if you, if you develop a new toothpaste, for example, uh, people patent the formula, uh, but you're still brushing teeth, right? So uh, you can still accomplish the task uh, with a different formula. So you're not really protecting your product and your company in as much as you are protecting a formula. Now, if that competition looks at your product and sees a special uh, raw material component in your formula that gives you features and benefits and performance far better than they have, then that's worth uh, patenting. But don't necessarily go out of your way to patent a formula for a new soap or a new lotion if uh, you are basically accomplishing the same thing that your competition is. Uh, don't publicize your invention before you go to market. Um, you know, this especially applies to pitch contests. Um, you know, uh, if you're in a pitch contest, you should have a patent pending um, on that product uh, as, and also talking to vendors. Uh, so uh, wrapping up now, uh, in part two, we're going to be talking specifically about the development of your product and manufacturing your product um, and how you create a prototype. Um, so for those of you who would like to uh, come back next week, that is our topic. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, cleveland.score, uh, that is our website landing page. And um, please visit that. Uh, find a mentor is in the top left there, little click. And you can uh, find folks like me who are willing to help you uh, bring your product concept along to commercialization. Well, thank you. Um, let's talk about some questions. Uh, let me go to the Q&A. All right. So Benson, um, is this session being recorded? Yes, it is. Uh, Jerry, I am starting up a business to compete with Golo. I can share more, but how do you, but how do I contact? Okay. Um, very good, uh, Jerry. Just simply, again, go to score.com, uh, find a mentor and specifically ask for me. And um um, you know, we can talk further about your concept. And Latoya, <clears throat> can you create a platform for hair products too? I am looking to, oh yes, yes, uh, of, of course. Uh, now here, Latoya, in, in hair, um, the first thing that I would do is um, I would subscribe to a publication called Happy, H-A-P-P-I. Um, it, it, it that stands for something that I can't 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 remember actually, but please go to um, www.haappi.com 
And it is kind of like the Bible, the publication for hair products uh, and cosmetics. Um, it's delivered to your uh, inbox once every week, and you can even subscribe to it um, hard copy. It's a magazine that'll come to your house. It is the best, absolutely the most awesome publication in the world for people involved with cosmetics and hair. And um, if you have a platform, you can test it out um, or, or look for examples there that will help you um, uh, move that concept along. It is a little bit chemistry oriented. I, I'm not going to lie, but that's only about 10%. The rest is is very great information on um, on hair care and personal care. Mark, I have a sample of my product already. Can I use this for the customer discovery process, or is that leading them to? Oh, excellent! So you have a prototype. Um, yes, perfect. Um, if you can um, show somebody um, the concept. Um, and have them touch, see, and feel, uh, probably the best way to get um, uh, in, in information. You know, I'm, I'm working on a project now that um, I'm having difficulty getting a prototype because of the mechanical engineering involved. So what we're doing is we're creating a, an animation, a cartoon basically, uh, to show customers that uh, this, the product will be used like this. So can you give us input? concerning its usage. So yeah, um, the um, if you have a prototype, it's perfect. Okay, any other questions out there? Um, Dan? I'd like to thank everybody uh, for attending. You will get a copy of the slides and also a link to the recording uh, will be sent to you. Uh, probably. Oh, Dan, uh, we have some more questions. Okay. Um, one from D. Uh, because of the cost of a lawyer to patent, I got the manual of patent examining procedures that the lawyer would like to. Um, can I do the patent myself? Uh, no. Uh, do not do that. Um, the uh, the um, the importance of a lawyer is um, the lawyer is kind of a, a an, an official designator uh, for the patent office. Um, you cannot write a patent and submit it to the patent office. You must have a lawyer do that through his own law firm, uh, a lawyer that is um, certified and uh, under license. Um, Shital, uh, if you develop a product that is bigger in size than your competitor's product, is that is that a design patent? Uh, generally, if it's the same product, no, just because it's bigger. Um, uh, a design patent, um, uh, to create a design that is different than your competitor, you must have something that is definitively and uh, obviously of a better design. Um, an example of that, let me think of an example. You know, I, I think of, you know, I think of furniture for some reason, you know, the Ikea example versus a Stickley. Um, you know, they both accomplish the same task, but Ikea has a patent on assemblage, um, um, not, not the design. Um, so again, there are many examples out there, but you, uh, but, but a change in size does not necessarily allow you for a different design patent. Any other questions that I can answer? Uh, anonymous attendee, what are your thoughts on subscription bundle product services like butcher? Oh, sure. Um, <clears throat> um, right. Okay. So the boxes that um, you receive through the mail monthly, um, they're money makers. Uh, I don't know who would buy them or why they would buy them, but they are money makers. 
any product is a good idea if you can find a target demographic that will buy it. So the people who thought of Butcher Box um, probably did their homework. They're probably thinking, well, I can sell a box of unique um, stuff to this target demographic. And I assume Butcher Box has something to do with cooking or food preparation. Um, I would hate to think it has something to do with killing anything. <laughs> uh, but yes, Butcher Box um, subscription, subscription bundles are good ideas if you can find the target demographic who will indeed buy it. Any, anyone else? Okay, Dan, I think that's the last one. Okay, and thanks everybody for great questions. Uh, and again, you will receive the slides uh, and a link to a recording, uh, which will be on the uh, score.org uh, website. Don't forget that uh, Cleveland Score uh, has a link on it where you can uh, uh, select a mentor. You can ask for Dave uh, Lipin by name, if you so desire, uh, or you can just uh, throw your hat in the ring and uh, a, a mentor will be assigned uh, to you. Uh, the link for the next session uh, go to our website uh, where we have a listing of our upcoming webinars and register for it uh, because you do have to actively register for each session. Unfortunately, at this time, we're not able to allow people to sign up for a group of sessions at the same time. So please do go to the uh, uh, score.org uh, website for Cleveland uh, and uh, locate upcoming webinars and then sign up for session two. There's also a session three. Session two is this time next week on Tuesday, the uh, uh, 16th. And session three is uh, the following Tuesday, the 23rd. And all, again, all of these sessions uh, will be recorded and uh, slides will be available. But you do have to sign up uh, and attend the session uh, to get them. Signing up and not attending the session uh, will not give you the same uh, results. So uh, there's that. Uh, that said, yeah, uh, there's a number of questions coming in yet. Okay, sure. Let's continue with the questions then. Okay, so um, will these slides be available? Yes. Um, yes, Latoya, you can uh, see the video. Stacy, Stacy, I am developing a gadget that will be a times and money saver for restaurants and non-electric. Great, uh, you know, Stacy. Um, I have a lot of ideas like that coming at me from different folks. And my number one um, uh, comment is, do you have any experience in the restaurant industry? Uh, it is a very competitive, uh, highly um, dynamic industry that are looking at gadgets all the time. And uh, if you can define what you mean by saving time and money, in you know, in the examples that I gave you about, um, uh, you know, solving the problem, identifying a problem, solving a problem, creating a solution, um, you know, that will uh, get you above and beyond um, in this um, area and get you to success quicker. But um, please study the restaurant industry; it is very complex and uh, competitive. Will these slides be available? Yes. Um, is there a publication that I should scribe for this? Uh, SCORE has a uh, website uh, with many webinars um, in various topics besides to product development. Um, is there a mentor at SCORE that would help me be the best to help me um, with this? I have a CAD drawing and a 3D pro. Yes, um, Stacy. Um, um, you can either ask for me or someone similar to me, and uh, they would certainly help you. Uh, thank you. And would we get a link for the next week's session? Yes. Um, all right. Okay, Stacy. Excellent. You own a restaurant, so you know all about the restaurant industry. <laughs> yeah, Stacy. if you'd like to talk further about um, your concept, I'd be more than happy to chat. Um, do you mind sharing uh, information on the background you have there? 
Um, yes, uh, Georgia, come back next week. These slides are available to you and we can um, talk further about developing your concept. And yes, Benson, um, Dan will make sure that you get the direct link to sign up for the next session. All righty, well, that's it. Don't forget uh, to go see to you all next week. Don't forget to go to the website and register. You must actively register for the next session.